Good morning on and all gathered here. The capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. The willingness to learn is a choice. With this quote from Brain Herbert, I C Tamar Selvi, Assistant Professor, Department of IT, Dr. M J Education Research Institute, welcome you all for the Faculty Development Program on Python for Data Science. Data science is an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, algorithm, and systems to extract knowledge and provide insight from many structural and unstructural data. The main objective of this FTP is to provide a wider insight on data science and to provide hands-on training in data science using Python. On this tremendous occasion, we would start with a short video about our institution and about the FDP. Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute warmly welcomes you to a world-class educational campus that showcases excellent infrastructure facilities, housing various departments in diverse fields of study. Faculty of Engineering and Technology. Computer Science and Engineering, IBM Lab, RD, Microsoft Lab, Sanjava Lab, .NET, CDAC Garuda, Internet Center, Cisco Net Academy. High Tech Lab, Cyber Forensic Lab, Campus Interview. Campus interviews are conducted every year, opening up new vistas for ideal placement opportunities for students. MOUs and international linkages to further the course of education and provide students with a haven of education dr mgr educational and research institute has signed mous with global universities in uk usa new zealand australia germany middle east malaysia and so on. The university is ISO 9001 2008 certified. Edupreneur Award. Events, free education, further list of events, Clean India Campaign 
स्वच्छ भारत अभियान Convocation Several dignitaries have graced the institution with their presence Dr M G R Educational and Research Institute providing education ingrained with moral and social values to bring out youth with character and humility beyond compare following the footsteps of a phenomenon for meaningful progress and a better tomorrow dr m g r educational and research institute Thank you, ma'am, for playing the video. Uh, now I call upon our enthusiastic head of the department, Professor Dr. N. Kanya, to deliver the welcome address. Ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Tamil. Good morning, everyone. Take up one idea. Make that one idea in your life. Think of it. Dream of it. Live on that idea. Let the brain, muscle, nerve, and every part of your body be full of that idea, and just. leave every other idea alone this is the way to success with the support of swami vivekananda this is in dr n kanya head of the department department of information technology dr n j r educational research institute university it's my pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of our university and uh, on behalf of our management to this three days faculty development program on python for data science Though we are held up in house due to COVID, COVID and uh, uh, this lockdown, as a positive side, we are, we have to take this opportunity to learn many new things and enhance our knowledge and skill in technical and uh, non-technical side. I'm sure that this FDP will enhance your knowledge in data science, which is a buzzword nowadays. So we are we like to appreciate all the. participants who have taken a step forward to attend this faculty development program we would like to express our profound gratitude to our respected founder chancellor dr ac shanmugam sir and our president engineer acs arun kumar sir for giving us an opportunity to organize these kind of events and also for inspiring us to host host it successfully i am happy to welcome our vice chancellor dr s geeta lakshmi ma'am who always be the inspiration to us who always motivate us to organize these kind of events virtually uh, and physically uh, she always motivate us to be active in all the time thank you ma'am we welcome you ma'am i am happy to welcome our joint registrar dr v sirraj sir who has been the backbone of our department who always been our mentor for the past two decades welcome you sir and i am also welcome our vibrant speaker of the day mr ahmed khalid He is the vice president in biomedical learning. Welcome, you sir. We are waiting for your uh, words. We received an overwhelming response from all uh, all over the country uh, for for this event. N nearing thousand people have registered. We are hosting it through YouTube uh, channel, so it may be 
forwarded to many and many people kindly take active participation in the session and give us a value feedback which help us to grow further uh, i would like to congratulate and appreciate the event coordinators mrs tamil chelvi uh, and mr sayed ali and mr shobana for uh, who made this event success and i would like to thank them for their tireless work i take this opportunity to thank all the faculty members of the department of csc and it for their pillar of support once again i welcome you all uh, stay tuned to learn thank you now i would call uh, professor dr s geeta hod csc to give few words about the ft oh good morning one and all present here and on uh, behalf of the department of computer science and engineering and information technology i would like to extend my sincere welcome to our uh, vice chancellor dr s geeta lakshmi madam and our joint registrar who is always with us uh to just uh, help us to do what uh, in the sense when we are thinking what is next they are the one always uh, make us to this is the one which we are looking for in future thank you uh, madam as well as civil uh, sir for guiding in uh, guiding us in the uh, right direction and uh, this uh, this topic uh, python for data science it's a need of an art that's uh, so um, today we are uh, just uh, running behind the technology so without the, if we are not upgrading ourselves we cannot uh, compete with uh, uh, compete with others so in order to compete with others we always have to learn ourselves and uh, enrich ourselves by knowing the latest technology i hope this two three days session uh, python for data science would be helpful for uh, everybody from the teaching fraternity so i wish uh, the participants should uh, take a key points from this and they have to use it in a future uh, assignments thank you thank you everyone and uh, this 3 day session would be useful for you thank you everyone thank you ma'am i request our beloved and passionate vice chancellor professor dr s geeta lakshmi to present the inaugural address a very good morning to one and all uh, who have uh, come here uh, to attend through the online uh, virtual mode uh, it's really indeed a pleasure to be with you all apart from my own um, uh, kind of uh, subject where i am a medical doctor and uh, i like to again and again for each meeting i would say that i would like to uh, know more about the other uh, branches of uh, science so it's one of this is uh, our computer science department and the it department where i have a lot of affinity because uh, the world is developing in a fast way like where you are all digitalized in all uh, avenues so it is our most important uh, way to understand and gain knowledge on this part so i would uh, uh, thank uh, uh, the department uh, mrs kanya and uh, geeta and uh, others in our team who have made it possible today uh, to share their no uh, other, the knowledge from the resource person Uh, who had been an entrepreneur by himself uh, after his uh, degree and graduation so i would also like that uh, you have to all have to learn about this and become your own uh, uh, start your own business rather than getting uh, uh, the uh, uh, getting uh, themselves a job so i should thank our management uh, uh, mr ac shanmugam our founder chancellor and uh, our president uh, mr arun kumar uh, who had been giving a lot of freedom for our uh, uh, faculty to develop their own uh, um, departments and um, uh, try to do, do also help them uh, in whatever uh, way they wanted to improve the infrastructure of the department and um, and also research uh, ongoing research as well as new research pr proposal so i would uh, also know like uh, this python and machine learning and whatsoever new uh, uh, kind of subjects which have come and still more to come it is all because of the research we uh, uh, who have done uh, by youngsters who have done a research on it and they have come out with these kind of languages on data science and uh, this is how when we learn about these data science it is we who have to implement it 
so it is implementation part is more important rather than acquire i mean after acquiring the knowledge it should not be put into waste it has to be implemented for example in our own institution it has to be implemented by the uh, persons of the faculty or whatever the students of final year who have learned Uh, uh the la this language and whatsoever many more to come and use it for the institutional purpose and this is what i need uh, the need of the r and i thank the organizers for inviting me and definitely the uh, tra the trailer was very good i should appreciate kanya and her team who have made it possible and i want each department to have these kind of trailer before starting the ftp thank you one and all Thank you, ma'am. That was inspiring. I request a dynamic joint register, Professor Dr. V. Suril Raj, to deliver the felicitation address. Sir. Uh, most respected, Lord uh, Chancellor, and President of our University, and our beloved Vice Chancellor, Dr. Gita Lakshmi, Madam, the heads of the Department of Computer Science and Information Technology, dear faculty, friends, and beloved participants. i think all of us we are aware of uh, the this pyramid you know in this uh, pyramid or uh, the triangle in the bottom line it is uh, all the raw informations which are been digital then if you go to the next level the raw informations are converted into known well known uh, informations raw data information and then from there we get the knowledge and then again if you see the same uh, organization structure of uh, this uh, nature the bottom most level it is only the data workers who really churn out lot of data but they do not know what are the meaning of these data but again uh, the person who sits above if they know what is happening there but uh, there is no holistic understanding or what would happen in the coming uh, days or what is the insights of this particular data won't be known for for this uh, and the people who are sitting in the middle level but if you see the top most level that is the chief of the organization here they have gone to the level just because of they could able to infer the data properly so the inference is very very important when you want to go up on the ladder so how you are getting the insight of what is happening in the data that is very very important so that's why the field data science is really playing a tremendous role in all the aspects right now everybody knows that uh, the covid 19 has really uh, paralyzed the entire world right now all the countries are struggling to get rid of this particular pandemic every country is right now spending billions and then billions of doll, I mean, uh, dollars uh, to me, i mean uh, to handle uh, this particular pandemic also so in this particular uh, uh, fight against this particular pandemic the data science is playing a very very important role in all the governments say for example recently the logical model provided by the iit mumbai the government of india or health ministry could able to say how the plateau when the plateau can come for a particular city the plateau in the sense of here where the infection level is less than 100 when at what time of year that can be reached so with all the available uh, parameters they have built a logical model so that's what actually we do in the data mining process we try to build a suitable model so that no fear the data can be inferred and then analysis so that no fear we could able to predict what will happen there the same logical model provided by the iit mumbai has given a clear picture about all most of the major cities and then states of our country so that no fear for example let me tell you in chennai the plateau will come only in the month of september and so until then yeah so we have to have i mean a lot of resources 
place in strategic uh, locations uh, and then uh, the facilities how it has to be distributed so that you know we can mitigate i mean we can handle this particular pandemic at the same time there is another model also the regression model uh, developed by uh, the university of massachusetts clear which says that if the same situation that is without a uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, antidote for this uh, pandemic uh, is available then the number of infections in our country will go up to 2.8 crore by the winter so it is really an alarming uh, i mean a uh, prediction here so that's what we here we do there in the data science that is the descriptive model and then the predictive model so for which the i mean the artificial intelligence and then the machine learning is playing a very very important role there so who whatever they study whatever the domain actually they learn but these uh, the concept of data science is very very important even i mean let it be chemical engineering or let it be biotechnology or whatever it is even let it be for uh, a commerce graduate also so everybody right now uses i mean needs the knowledge of data science and then there are a lot of tools available to do a lot of analysis on the existing data but at the same time when it has to be tailored made for our specific requirement unless we are good in some other basic programming of handling these data and then processing these data also so that's why this sort of language i mean knowing python is very very important uh, i mean uh, say uh, uh, necessity uh, for uh, dealing with the data science so again if you see the opportunities available look here the plenty of opportunities are opening up for data science and again if you see the take home for this data science professionals invariably i mean uh, uh, i mean not seeing the background of the candidate uh, either he is a previous course passed out or even if he is a third standard but uh, if he could able to build a real useful model for this particular type of uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, problem uh, problem and then with this uh, attributes here so he plays a very important role in all these organizations so i think all of you are aware uh, most of the countries around 120 anti uh, uh, antidotes are uh, being developed uh, 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 across uh, most of the countries so all these things are possible because of okay, uh, they use uh, the data and then the data science to validate and then uh, to remove the unnecessary data so that they can identify the clear pattern of uh, uh, things which are happening there so that's why you know here so all these things are happening i mean are possible now so my request to all the uh, participants here so try to have a deep dive on this particular python programming so that to play along with the, uh, the fundamentals of the data science or the data mining uh, so that definitely you will have a better opportunity than the rest of your competitors so with this note of uh, i thank the department of uh, computer science and the information technology for arranging such a wonderful topic uh, for a deep diving of all the participants thanks a lot thank you sir for your speech before we start our session today i would like to remind the participant that the feedback from the attendance link will be available only in the youtube chat box at the end of the session and will not be posted in the telegram group today we have mr ahmed khalid vice Pre uh, president imarcus learning with us for the session on introduction to data science i would like to uh, request uh, dr uh, g uh, victor sudha george to introduce our guest of the day thank you ma'am education is not the learning of the fact but the training of the mind to think albert einstein good morning i am dr g victor sudha george professor of department of csc it is a great honor to welcome and introduce our resource person for this session of the fdp on python for data science today we have a highly qualified and knowledgeable person mr ahmed halid with us to deliver the lecture on the topic introduction to data science 
he has graduated in bachelor of technology in automobile engineering from mit chennai and master of business administration and management from iim bangalore mr ahmed started his career as an area manager in bajaj auto limited later he became a co-founder and director sales in axiom academy in the year 2013 he has become the director sales for transprint and subsequently in 2016 he worked for cyber technologies in his 12 years of experience he has worked in different capacities in training sales marketing and also business development his hard work and perseverance has paved the way to his current position as vice president business head in imagcus learning i am sure this morning is going to be a very informative and beneficial for all of us listening to mr ahmed halit's lecture now on behalf of the department of it and csc and all the participants i welcome you sir sir now you can start a session sir thank you uh very good morning i want to all thank you for taking your time out and joining for this webinar uh so before i start the session i would like to give a uh small thanks to the mgr university uh management uh, all the uh vice chancellor as well as uh, uh for a wonderful address from the uh, joint register and uh, i would also like to thank the department of computer science and it for organizing this webinar to the hod ma'am as well as to all the faculty members uh, thank you so much uh, and for all of you who are here in fact uh, this is going to be a three days of our session uh, so uh, we took some liberty on the first half an hour and had a good introduction uh, so three days uh, today what we are going to see is about introduction to data science and this will be a very uh, generic uh, introduction to data science so for people who are not much aware about the uh, parts of data science right you know what are the uh different parts of data science so those things will be uh you will be known about it and uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow you will be taken through a hands on uh portions wherein you will be learning more about uh, uh python and uh, how to begin with python as well as uh, how to do data science with python all right so uh thank you once again for uh, uh taking your time out and uh, joining for this uh, faculty development program i believe that at the end of the session you will be gaining some knowledge about data science so today's session what i will be taking you through is that uh, see i will be taking you through a lot of case studies uh, all our uh, real time case studies with uh, what we call case studies or examples from your real life so that you will be able to relate how data science is associated with your day to day life and why data science is also going to be the next big thing or is it it's already the big thing right so why it's going to stay here for a very very long time so all these things you will be uh, coming to know about it session all right so uh, we will be having a question and answer session at the end of the uh, session and uh, so if you have questions regarding the session or anything related to data science you can keep your questions and i'll be taking it at the last uh, half an hour or last 15 minutes of the session meanwhile if you have anything or you wanted to respond to any of my questions because i would like to keep it interactive uh, so if you wanted to respond to some of my questions you can put your uh, uh, queries or answers or something on the uh, youtube chat box and i am having another screen where i can also parallelly see the chat comments as well all right so uh, good to see so let's start let me not spend more time on this so before i start i will just give a small introduction about our, our firm so imarticus started in the year of 2012 headquartered in mumbai and if you look into it we are very very focused on certain sectors only so one of the sectors is financial services the other is ai which is basically the data science or analytics services and the third part is the technology area so these are the areas where we are very specialized in and uh, 
as i said 2012 is when we started in last 8 years our journey has been pretty tremendous so we are currently present in about uh, 14 different locations across the country and we are also present outside india as well where we have operations in uae malaysia and philippines as well uh, i could also see a lot of part, a few participants who have registered from across the world other different countries as well uh, but uh, some of my examples or case studies today will be more relevant to india so i am really apologizing for that in the beginning so this is uh, our uh, presence at the global level so if you can look into the locations uh, where we are present across the country as well as uh, outside the country and right from uh, chandigarh and lucknow in the north of india to coimbatore in the south of india imatikas is there everywhere today uh, to put our eight years of journey in some numbers uh, uh, about uh, uh, 35000 uh, candidates have been trained so far and with an average feedback of about 4.7 also we have a uh, uh, close to 500 firms associated with us and some of the firms are listed over here so uh, majority majorly what these firms will do is that they will be partnering with us also to deliver some curriculum content etc so for example uh, we have partnered with uh, kpmg for our data science program wherein uh, the project support case study support all these things comes from kpmg as well for our machine learning and deep learning modules we have association with ibm similarly we have association with different corporates to bring the industry curriculum to the potential candidates and 80 percentage of our training candidates are all working professionals right from 3 years to 30 years of experience across the country uh, so that is about the uh, small introduction about uh, imarticus so let me not take much of your time uh, good let's start uh, now so how or why is data science important right this is the first question right okay everybody today talks about data science data science and data science so why is data science important here so first thing is that you know similar to your academic career right in your job you will be taking lot of decisions in your job in the same way right similar way even in the corporate side right there will be lot of decisions taken on the everyday basis correct uh, it's like you know you would not have even thought about it right so a lot of decisions will be taken where what product to be launched right uh, what should be the price of my product uh, which category i should launch or what uh, market i should launch uh, who are my competitors a lot of such questions right these are decisions that has been taken on a day to day basis on a uh, corporate industries right corporate world the question now is how do corporates take decisions what are the options that is available for them or what are the decision making process that is available to them right so number one is i will just give you a example uh, which will be you know better for your understanding okay, let me put you through an example just look at this example okay now just watch it very carefully i will take you through some terms and conditions in this all right just watch it carefully now if you look into this the goalkeeper is a right handed guard the shooter is a right footed guard okay so this shooter is having three options before him forget about the top corner bottom corner etc this is a penalty shootout in football match if you have not seen a football match you would have uh, you can relate to it okay so now there are three options either he can shoot it to the left <coughs> sorry or to the right or to the <coughs> sorry center of the goal post so there are three options before the shooter <coughs> now could you tell me what will be your suggestion to the shooter in what direction will you ask the shooter to shoot this could you tell me our uh, responses on the chat box let me have a, a look at it i will wait for your answers uh, so there are three options just mention l r and c that's enough for me okay so what will be your suggestion to the uh, shooter would you ask him to shoot it on the left or right or center of the goalkeeper which is mentioned as c right so there are three options just mention l r or c inside your uh, chat window i'll be able to go through okay put it out your answers i think uh, i need more answers from you more participation from your end 
sorry i'm little uh, uh, strict in terms of participation right so let me get more participation from your end okay so good amount of answers coming in right that's fine guys so if you now look into your screen right uh, you have a lot of uh, you can also hopefully you can also access the comment box and chat box right uh, i am getting predominantly about 60 to 70% or more than 70% responses coming for yell option okay it means everybody is suggesting to go and shoot it on the direction of yell uh, lesser number of people are asking me to shoot it on r and i could see uh, c and one or two uh, people who have said c so far very less number of c okay so let me take now i am going to listen to all your suggestions okay so this shooter he is listening to all your suggestions and he is going to shoot it on the left side because that is where the majority of your people have opted for right so he goes again and shoot it on the left side direction of the goal post now this is the left side right this process is called opinion based decision making i told you already guys there are two major processes of decision making involved in this one is called opinion based decision making okay first decision making how do you take decision i listen to all your suggestions right all your opinions and then i went and took a decision which is called as opinion based decision making what is the other option which is available okay this is the first option opinion based decision making this is what industry was following for a very very long period of time now what is the other what are the other options which is available for them, right let me look into the data last 30 years right there is an analysis that has happened on the last 30 years of all the football matches data penalty shootout data all the penalty shootout data for last 30 years now what is the result that says is this whenever there is a right handed goalkeeper and a right footed shooter right look at the result the goalkeeper is jumping towards his left 52 percentage of the time so if you are shooting to the left what are the chances of getting a goal only 48 percentage of the time okay so if you are shooting it to the left you have a chance of getting a goal 48 percentage of the time rather which is less than 50% remember this rather if you are shooting to his right side he is jumping 45% of the time to his right it means that you have a chance of 55% to score a goal if, if you are shooting it to the right better chance than l you all suggested me to go for l right but you have better chance in r 55% versus 48 percentage now look at the data of center the goalkeeper is standing in the middle only 3 out of 100 times 3 percentage what it means 97 out of 100 times 97 percentage of the time you have a chance of scoring a goal if you shoot it just straight nothing else right so which is the higher chance the data is saying that you have 97 percentage of shooting getting a goal if you just shoot it straight so this process is called data driven decision making what is this called guys this is called as data driven decision making why because we are just listening to the data we are looking at the data and taking a decision so if i look at the data and take the decision where will i shoot it i will just shoot it straight clear okay so this is the two types of decision making that is involved now the industry is completely moving towards data driven decision making from opinion based decision making so if you want to go towards data driven decision making what is important data is important you all agree right so that is where study of data what we call it as data science comes into prominence so any data driven decision making you can take only by looking at the data for that you need data all right okay now let me go through some of the uh, 
uh, use cases. So before that, you can see this, right? Data is the oxygen of digital economy. The world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data. All these are famous quotes that's coming in very recently, right? Why exactly everybody is talking about data science now? If you look into it, three to four years back, you guys, you are you are all faculties of different colleges and universities, right? Three to four years back, how many colleges or universities were having data science course in their curriculum? Just answer this, right? Zero. No college, no university was having data science course in their curriculum. But today, more than 50 institutions is launching data science UG program, B in data science, B tech in data science, or AI, or machine learning, or whatever it is. More than 50 colleges or universities, as far as I know, are launching this in this current financial year, current academic year. Why so many people are launching this now? Why nobody was talking about data science sometime back? Correct? It, that is a question which you need to answer, right? Look into this. What has happened in the world is that we are generating huge amount of data now. A simple example I will always tell uh, the candidates. Three, four years back, you went to a recharge shop, mobile recharge shop. And what was your communication to the shopkeeper? You will go and tell him that, you know, this is take my 100 rupees. I wanted to recharge for 100 rupees. And what will be your next question? What will be my talk time? Correct? What will be my talk time? Today, are we using that word talk time anymore? Nobody is talking about talk time. What we are talking, we are talking about data. Am I going to get 1 GB data or 2 GB data or 1.5 GB data per day? So can you just imagine how the shift has happened from talk time to the data in last three, four years, right? So look at the number, outstanding, stunning numbers over here, right? Look into the number of uh, mails that we are sending every day. 2.9 million mails are going every second, right? How many WhatsApp messages you are sending every day? How many Instagram likes you do, right? So all this is happening because your data becomes cheaper or free. You all agree? In last three, four years where this revolution happened, we call this as the data generation revolution. A huge, uh, uh, huge catalyst in this might be geo with respect to India, but this is not just with respect to India. This revolution has happened across the world, right? The data cost of the data has become much, much cheaper. So what we do, we do generate a lot of data. You all agree? Okay, so the next part, okay, now I'm generating a lot of data in last three, four years, which you all agree, right? So compared to three years back, four years back, we are all generating a lot of data. Now, next revolution, there is one more revolution that happened along with that. That is called, I will just give you an example of this, right? Can someone tell me what is inside this box, right? There is something inside this box. You would have seen this in your WhatsApp messages or in some mails, etc. I will wait for your response. Any answers? Computer, data, PC, anything else? Storage, okay. So uh, let me open it up. It is nothing but, a lot of people are getting it right, right? This is an IBM five megapixel, five, sorry, five MB, five megabytes hard drive. Okay, how much storage? 5 MB. Now, you take one photo in your smartphone. How much MB is going to be? That is going to be more than 5 MB, at least 5 MB. One pic on your smartphone, one photo on your smartphone. Now, why I'm telling you this is 50, 60 years back, we were storing data for one photo, one 5 MB data. We were using such a huge box. Correct? And now we have moved on in terms of a revolution called 
data storage revolution if you all remember 10 12 years back we were using this right this is called a floppy disk this storage capacity was 1.44 mb if you all remember 10 12 years back now just imagine what is the revolution that has happened now right from a floppy disk we moved on to cd drives we moved on to dvds blu rays pen drives memory cards sd card right hard disk huge amount of revolution that happened in the last 10 to 12 years in the storage space correct you all agree right and now what we are doing we are not using any of this and what are we using today right we are using something called cloud storage what is cloud storage now why are we using cloud storage now Right, we are preferring to use cloud storage, right? Why are we using the cloud? Because it is cheaper, flexible, accessible across the world, right? It is more safer. Uh, your data is going to remain safer and corrupt. You know, it's not going to become corrupt or anything like that, right? So a lot of benefits are there using cloud storage. That is why slowly and steadily we are moving towards cloud storage. Now this revolution, you all agree, right? This revolution of cloud also happened in last two three years. Right, three years maximum, and this is called data storage revolution. Now, a combination of both. First, is you have on one side a data generation revolution. On the other side, you have a data storage revolution. It's a deadly combination, right? I have a lot. I have. I'm generating a lot of data, and I have also a place to store all this data in a cheaper way. So, what is the next step that comes in? The next step is. Okay, can I analyze this data? Can I get something useful out of this data? Right. So that is called as data science or data analytics. Okay. So I will just take you to what is data analytics? Is a beginning of data science. Right? Data analytics is nothing but analyzing a data set for a problem statement. That's all. Very very layman's explanation. Right. You are going to analyze a data set. for a problem statement that is called as data analytics because we already saw we have huge amount of data it is all stored that what do we do with that let let us do the analysis okay i will just explain to you take you through the processes involved in the data analytics side what are the processes involved remember this there are overall four processes are involved in the data analytics side the first process is called as data collection process What is data collection process? If you wanted to analyze any data, you need a data. So you either you should be involved in this, or you should be guiding somebody to collect the data. So data collection is the first process. Okay. Whenever I talk about data, normally you will be thinking about uh, what we call it as uh, text or numbers, etc. Don't always think like that. Data could be of any format. data can be in images data can be uh, audio video files or anything it can be so data can be in any format okay so when you collect this data remember this this data will be in an unstructured format so what is the first next step that we need to do we need to format it so the next step is called data formatting we have an unstructured data so let us format it to a structured format so what is a when i say unstructured or data formatting what is it basically your data might have a lot of missing values right a lot of uh, outliers it can have some wrong data so all this is called basically your unstructured data to structured format you need to format it for a structured format okay <clears throat> now you collected unstructured data you formatted it to a right format what will you have now you have something called data set okay now you have a clean data set okay so if when you have a clean data set what is the next process you need to go and analyze it i already told you right there is a lot of data set okay now you have a clean data set now what should we do now we need to go for analytics which is called data analytics process but how do i do analysis right okay this is a data set i agree But how do I do analysis? You need to give me some problems, correct? Right? What do I do with the data? 
correct so that is called problem statement so now you have you got the definition what is data analytics analyzing a data set for a problem statement that's it clear so you need a problem statement to do any analysis now what is a problem statement a problem statement can be anything right why my business is going in loss right what should i uh, how much profit or loss i will get next year right what should i do to make it profitable right where exactly am i losing money so all these are problem statements with respect to business side okay i am not saying that problem statement can be anything according to the industry specific or domain specific so now once i get the problem statement i will dive deep into the data set and i will do all the analysis and get the result you understand this guys so this is called data analytics now once i have done all the analysis what is the next step the last step is called data visualization i need to present this analysis to someone to my business to my client to my customer to my manager or anybody correct so the last step is called data visualization so these are the four major processes involved in data analytics okay i hope you guys are all clear now what i will do is i will take you through some case studies examples across different domains to give you some clarity that data analytics is used not only in any one or two industry it is used in every single industry today okay so all you need is a database and a problem statement you will be able to do any analysis so any industry any domain irrespective of that so let me take you through one example okay so we are going to see about analytics in healthcare so why i took this as an example is that this is some area where we are all we are we can relate to today right we are in a healthcare crisis there is a, a global pandemic that is happening right so all this are there so let us take this as an example which is basically analytics in healthcare so what are the situation that we are facing we are facing a virus called covid 19 and because of that there is lockdown because of that there is a lot of uh, global pandemics is there etc stuff okay so let us see what i have taken now is i have taken that data set of all the cases in india all the covid 19 cases in india i have just provided a screenshot as on yesterday there were close to 12 lakh cases and if you all remember this the first case was on january 30th in kerala 20 year old female issue kerala etc right so this was the very first case in india and from there in the next 6 months we are at 12 lakh cases okay so this is basically called as a open source data you can get it from the internet itself now this is called a data set okay now this can be in unstructured format i can format it right i can do all the formatting process and i can format it to a structured format so we got a clean data set ready with us now what is the next thing we need if i wanted to do any analysis i need something called problem statement so what is my problem statement here i have taken one problem statement which is can you predict the cases of future can you predict the cases of future now why is it important to predict the cases of future hey you wanted to know the state government and the central government wants to be prepared correct or not agree how many beds are required how many hospitals are required how many testing kits are required what we need all these things the government has to be prepared and if they have to be prepared they should know how many cases are going to be there in the future so who will do the prediction definitely your uh, doctors are not going to do the prediction that is not their job Your bureaucrats or politicians or officers are not going to do the prediction. So this is exactly where a data analyst comes into the picture, or a data science professional comes into the picture. So that is their job of doing the prediction. Remember this: all your answers, how many testing kits I need for next one month, how many hospitals I need, how many quarantine facilities I need, should I extend my lockdown or not? All these decisions comes from one question, one answer, which is. what will be my cases for the future okay so this is exactly where you have to go deep dive you have to apply a statistical model and you need to predict the thing i'm not going to get into the technicalities now because this is an introductory session you will be learning more about it in the tomorrow session okay so let me show you the output so what we have taken is i've taken a, a data analysis from a uh, data analyst and 
this is basically done on doubling rate basis so what we have taken is that the data the covid 19 data in india is basically doubling at every 20 days so this is what the analysis is saying so the data analysis is saying that our cases are doubling at every 20 days now what is it basically you are got as a meaning of that your current cases are at 12 lakhs right so for 12 lakhs doubling at 20 days so it means that in next 20 days we are going to be at 24 lakhs cases in india if you can mark this if you are going to go see if you look into the doubling rate numbers for the last 10 to 12 days it's all around 19 to 20 days right so by august 12 if the prediction goes right the analysis prediction goes right we will be at 24 lakh cases in 20 days it means that it took about uh, 6 months to reach 12 lakh cases you all agree correct and in next 20 days we are going to double it so this is basically a huge job so now the government can think of preparing for it or what should be done etc based on this prediction so if i can predict it for the entire country i can also predict it for other countries i can also predict it for district wise state wise all the predictions are possible understand this guys okay so this is exactly what is called data analytics in healthcare so why i am telling you this is your data analysis can be used in any domain or any industry one example is what i have given us covid analysis okay so let me give you another example your data analytics can was very widely used in retail now what is called retail whatever purchase that you are doing right your uh, regular shopping to grocery shopping to anything in e-commerce whatever it is right so you all would have gone to any one of these stores or you would have purchased from you know dmart or reliance supermarkets or more or big bazaar or amazon big basket whatever it is right you would have got it from any one of these places definitely i assume so when you buy when you purchase your items and when you come to the billing they ask for your mobile number agree now what is the purpose of that mobile number they are capturing all your purchase history to your mobile number and storing the data right now what can be done with the data they got the data but what what will the store do with that data have you ever thought about it let me take big bazaar what are they doing with the data correct so what i will do is i will give you some examples what they are doing one is they can do their inventory management right the stock management or well, how much stock to purchase etc stuff right they can understand their consumer behavior if you analyze the data you will understand your consumer behavior right uh, how much it is going to be uh, or what are the products the consumers are buying together right so or where should i keep my products what are the arrangements i should do right so a lot of such things comes out of consumer behavior and uh, uh, i always give a simple example like you know in india if you all can uh, relate to have you seen that all the brands sell their gulab jamun mix in one plus one offer only so have you ever thought about it why it is done like that right so the example study or a case study for a consumer behavior now the next is that loyalty points right you all have a lot of stores as loyalty points to it promotional optimization why should let me take for example you purchase something from amazon you get every day mails from amazon or flipkart correct so do you think that the mail what you are going to get it your friend will also get it no correct the mails are different optimized in different ways for different people so this is called promotional optimization and then there is something called own product launch now what is called own product launch i'm going to take this as an example and i will give you how data analysis can help in identifying the own product launch if you walk into any store you will always find a lot of products from their own store branded products you go to big bazaar big bazaar has some of the brands own branded items over there right now let me give you an example if you are not getting it right so we are going to see only about the own product so what is the problem statement here the problem see your data set is very clear your data set is your purchase data correct right? all the customers purchase data what is the problem statement here 
the problem statement is what category of product should i launch a simple example i will tell you you go to amazon and type amazon basics amazon basics is nothing but amazon's uh, own product correct they have launched their own product that is called amazon basics now similarly you walk into any store a big bazaar or any reliance store or anything they have their own products as well okay so my question is the problem statement is how do amazon decide what category of products to launch that is the question problem statement they will not come in every single product you agree so how do you decide or how do the shop decide what category of products they should launch in their own brands i will just give you an example right now you walk into big bazaar store i'm just keeping big bazaar for a as an example you can take it any supermarket whatever you like right i'm taking big bazaar because more uh, uh, naturally relevant shop kind of a stuff right now you walk into a big bazaar store you wanted to buy a perfume or a body spray simple right you want to buy a body spray or a perfume and there is a lot of brands are there you have axe and fog and engage and a lot of stuff are there right all your brands favorite brands are there and there is also a nicely packed big bazaar body spray sitting in the shelf okay will you buy big bazaar body spray okay my question is that the price is same will you buy big bazaar body spray you know ignoring your regular branded etc stuff uh, can i get some answers in the chat box so that i will understand uh, whether you are all in the same line will you buy the big bazaar branded body spray some answers on the chat box guys yes no okay so good amount of nos no so i assume that okay let me come to why no we will come to it later okay now let me assume that similarly you are also not going to buy your big bazaar shampoos or soap as well okay so body spray or your shampoos or your soap you are really concerned right you know why should i buy big bazaar uh, brand right because you have your regular brand or you might be afraid that oh my god you know I, how it might smell or my hair might get spoiled and stuff like that right okay great now you done your all this shopping you went to another segment which is basically your regular grocery item okay so you we went there there is a boiled rice is there right you have a uh, dal items soor dal your moong dal and your uh, uh, gram dal all dal items are there idli rice is there okay you have some uh, jeera packets you have some uh, cashew packets or whatever it is this is there on the other side of the shelf right now these are all packed in big bazaar packets okay all these items are nicely packed in big bazaar packets your pepper your uh, cardamom your jeera whatever everything right or your dal items etc etc now will you buy this if it is big bazaar brand or stuff right we all buy it now right will you buy all these items if it is if it is big bazaar branded packed in nicely big bazaar branded packet we all buy it why you just think about this right yes you all buy regularly we are all buying right so you think about this all these items wherein you are going to put it on your body and wash it off one right we are very keen that we will not buy big bazaar item okay wherein all these are food items which your kids at home are going to eat your grandparents or old people at home are going to eat but you are not bothered about the brand you go to big bazaar you will take the big bazaar things and come you go to reliance it will be reliance you'll buy it. See all these things. What I have written here is BB Royal. BB Royal is a big basket brand. Okay, nothing but big basket. You order in online bigbasket. dot com. You all know. You would have heard about it. You will get BB Royal products. Now you get it and eat. You are not bothered about the brand. See how human beings function, right? Weird, right? All these things wherein we are using a soap, shampoos, and stuff like that. We wanted branded stuff. 
and wherever it is like your rice and dal and stuff you will go for they are non branded and some people are saying okay it depend on the price no exactly not exactly there is a price elasticity but not every time let me put it out you go to buy noodles you wanted to buy a instant noodles instant noodles right what will you buy will you buy maggi or fp or top ramen noodles in the shell or you will buy big bazaar uh, packed noodles from the shell you are not going to buy big bazaar correct you will only take maggies or your top ramen peppies etc again because you are brand loyal that is the same thing right so basically your data analysis will help us to understand for all these shops in what category of product should they come and launch their own product this is very very important you take for example amazon you wanted to buy a dslr camera right you go and search in amazon what dslr camera you will buy you will go for canon or nikon or your sony right now amazon is also having a dslr camera let us say maybe 2000 3000 lesser you said depends on the price at 2000 3000 still you will not buy amazon you will still go for a canon or a nikon or a sony correct because you are very brand conscious on the mobile on the camera but when it comes to you wanted to buy a bag camera bag for it or a tripod to keep the camera now will you go for canon nikon only or you are okay to buy an amazon basic tripod as well correct wherein you are more interested to buy an amazon basic tripod you will show more interest you understand this guys so you are able to find the difference and these kind of that is why your amazon is not going to come into the dslr camera sector but they will have you go and search in amazon they will have dslr tripod already launched in their brand okay so this is exactly what data analysis can help us to identify okay let me take another example a very uh, a very different industry which is basically called as sports industry how data analytics is used in sports right i will give you a very common uh, example from cricket everybody follows cricket or at least majority of you follows cricket or you know cricket right so let me give an example every single ball that is getting bowled right so much of data is getting collected just look into it your data is getting collected when during release point what is the release point of the ball right you can see this is the release point of the bowler's hand pitching area where is exactly it is pitching bounce how much it is bouncing right and then the hitting spot where exactly it is hitting on the bat or on the stump or on the pad etc and speed of the ball so just imagine one ball being bowled we are collecting close to five different data points now what is the use of these data points right okay it is all collected it is all stored now what is the what is the use of this right because then the next step comes in is that okay can we analyze it so that is why if you watch carefully every single team in cricket or in any sport today they have a data analyst the job of the data analyst is to completely analyze the data understand the strengths and weaknesses of the players right their own players what is the strengths and weaknesses of the opposition players all these things will be they just look into it for example this is exactly a, a data analysis done on rohit sharma's thing right so this is rohit sharma you all know that it's an opening batsman so if rohit sharma needs to be get out on the first 20 balls right that should you bowl what will be your advice to the bowler so this is what it is he is getting out for the full length balls only you understand this right so majority of his dismissals comes from full length or good length or half volley balls if it is short balls he is not getting out or very less number so this kind of analysis is what done in sports industry okay so basically why i am telling you this is data analytics is used across all the domains and all the industry you take any industry i have given you examples of healthcare retail sports you take telecom energy pharma or uh, media banking financial take stock markets right huge amount of data and 
you want to analyze the performance of a stock or how a stock is going to perform in the next one month or one year etc what do you do you go to analyze the data correct so that is exactly called as data analysis i hope you guys are clear now okay so let me go to the next session uh, next part of the uh, session which is basically before that in case you guys are more interested to uh, learn about uh, uh, data analytics in sports there is a movie called moneyball starring brad pitt one of the very very uh, uh, known movies for uh, analysis using data analytics in sports you can watch this movie and you will be getting uh, better information about the test well. okay so let me move on to the next topic and uh, that is basically called as artificial intelligence all right so now what is artificial intelligence very very layman's explanation if any machine or a system can replicate a human intelligence that system is going to be called as artificial intelligence system that's all right very layman's very simple explanation any system or a machine that is going to replicate any human intelligence that is called as an artificial intelligence system now what is so before we understand about replicating human intelligence let me give you some examples or what are the human intelligence that is available there okay now let us take some examples right what are human intelligence human beings can interpret data for decisions you all agree right human beings can communicate with people this is also one of the human intelligence human beings can adapt to new situations right think about covid four or five months back we do not know what is a pandemic right if somebody is wearing a mask and coming in near to you you will get scared and today it is exactly the opposite if someone is coming without a mask we are getting scared so we are adapting to new situations much faster correct and identifying patterns in the data right so that is another human intelligence right you can identify the patterns in a data so these are some of the human intelligence now what i told you if any system or a machine can replicate any one of these human intelligence that is going to be called as a artificial intelligence system correct let me give you an example you all heard, heard about something called alexa speaker correct amazon echo speaker we call it alexa or you can take your iphone you can call it siri or you can use okay google in your android phones etc now what is it it's basically you ask alexa hey alexa what is the temperature in chicago right and alexa will send this voice commands convert into binary processes will happen on the alexa server and then it gives you a voice like output the output it says that the current temperature in chicago is 6 degree fahrenheit now this what is it doing here alexa right alexa is basically communicating with people correct communicating with people is what it is a human intelligence so as alexa is communicating with people can we call alexa as a artificial intelligence system i told you right any system or a machine that can replicate any one human intelligence that is going to be called as a artificial intelligence system okay that is why we call your alexa or siri or whatever it is as a ai assistant clear guys okay right so let me move on okay so now let us see what are the types of artificial intelligence so basically artificial intelligence have multiple branches to it right machine learning is just one branch of it you have nlp which is natural language processing computer vision robotics all these are branches of artificial intelligence we are not going to get into all those things on a data science perspective i'm only going to give introduction to machine learning and deep learning today <clears throat> now what is machine learning is nothing but it's a subset of artificial intelligence machine learning is nothing but where the machine learns from the data and takes decisions i will give you some examples you will be able to understand better but deep learning is nothing but it is a subset of machine learning okay you all clear please keep in your mind machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence deep learning is a subset of machine learning so what is deep learning it will also learn from the past data like machine learning but the only difference is that it uses something called deep neural network so your deep learning is going to use something called neural networks to learn that is the only difference between a 
AI system, uh, sorry, machine learning system and a deep learning system. Okay, now let us move ahead. I will give you more real time applications for machine learning and deep learning. You will be able to understand it better. Okay, so you all would have used an application called Ola or Uber, right? Across the country, it's there. You, if you have not used it, probably like you can check it up. Okay, so Ola or Uber is a very, very commonly known application now used for booking cabs. Uh, okay, now what are the input data that you provide here? Okay, basically, you give something called pickup location right you are giving something as drop location and you are price uh, your car selection is here so these are the three major input parameters that you're giving to ola application okay in return your ola gives you an output right and what is that output just look into this your input you are giving pickup location drop location and car selection your output is nothing but your price Ola application gives you a price as the output. Now my question is very simple. Okay. Now, when your output is same, my question is that will the Ola application price, let us take that every day you are doing it, right? Every day your pickup location is your home, your drop location is your college or your university or your office, and your car is basically you are selecting micro. So just listen to the conditions. Your pickup location is your home, your drop location is your college, and your car selection is micro. Now, will your price be same or different? That is the question. Will your price be same or different every day? You do every day in the morning, right? Will your uh, price be same or different? Okay, so your price is going to be different every day it is going to be different the question is that why is it different right your pickup location is same your drop location is same your car is same so basically what it means is that all your input parameters are same but why is your price changing right so why is it different every day so basically it is because ola is not just considering these three as your input parameter but Ola is also taking a lot of other parameters for input parameters. What are they? So these are some of the other parameters which Ola is considering, correct? Your traffic, your cab availability, distance of the cab, petrol diesel price, week day, weekend, peak or non-peak car, right? What is the demand on the destination? So all these are basically other input parameters which your Ola application is taking in, correct? And what Ola application does? Ola application does an analysis. With all these data, Ola application is doing an analysis. And then it is giving you price as the output. So this analysis is done based on an algorithm which has been built already. Correct? That algorithm is called machine learning algorithm. Why? Because your input data every day is not going to be the same. It is going to be dynamic. Correct. So based on different dynamic possibilities of data, your Ola application is running an algorithm, machine learning algorithm and analyzing the data and giving you a price decision. You understand this? You normally you go to a local auto driver who has, let us take a meter, meter auto driver who has a meter on his auto, auto rickshaw, right? And you go and ask him every day you wanted to go to college. Every day the price is going to be saved. Correct? Because he is not going to consider all these parameters and going to change the data. Correct? So that is how your machine learning algorithm helps. Your machine learning algorithm gives you better solutions based on variability in the data. And who is doing the analysis? Your Ola application is doing the analysis. So this is called as machine learning algorithm. Okay. I'll give you some more examples where all machine learning is used. Okay. Let me take an example which you are using every day. Google search engine. Right. What I wanted to know, I wanted to know what everybody is talking about hydroxychloroquine now. So I wanted to understand what is hydroxychloroquine. I went and searched for it in the Google search engine. And what Google did is Google gave me 4.3 crore results, not 100 or 200. Google gave me 4.3 crore results, right? 
So even considering there are 10 results in one page, I have 4.3 lakhs of pages, right? Now, if I'm asking you, when was the last time you went to the fourth or fifth page of a Google search result? I haven't gone for a very, very long time. So 99% of the time you get your results on the very first page. How many pages are there? 4.3 lakh pages are there. And we have not even gone to the third or fourth page, right? How is it working every time? So that is how machine learning. So because Google is using an algorithm which is based on machine learning, correct? Multiple parameters contributes to this. Who is searching for what? What are the pages they are clicking? What are the content, relevant content in different URLs? So based on all these things, page ranking happens in Google so that you get better results every time. You get all your results on the very first page, right? Forget about 100 pages, 200 pages. You have not even gone to fifth or fourth or fifth page, correct? This is exactly what is called your machine learning algorithm, right? And I can give you another example, your spam mail. If I hope everybody uses Google. There is a spam folder on your Gmail. So whenever there is a spam mail coming in, how Google classifies to spam or inbox, correct? Machine learning. Because there is an algorithm which has been built to identify the keywords. Based on the keywords, it allocates to spam or to your inbox. You go to your spam folder, tell me how many times you found a very useful mail by mistake gone to spam. Very, 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 very rare. Correct? So it works beautifully, right? So you understand how machine, because somebody is training the keywords, right? Now, prizes, you know, Nigerian princess, lottery win, cash price, offer this, that. All these are considered as spam mail keywords. And your Google identifies that, Gmail identifies that, and put it into the spam folder. This is called machine learning algorithm. Your machine learns and performs actions, right? Okay, so I can give you hundreds of examples. You take your example of your Netflix or your Amazon Prime or YouTube. How are they recommending videos or movies to, movies to you? Right? How many times does it happen to you? You went to YouTube to watch one or two, one video for five minutes or 10 minutes, and then you ended up spending about two hours watching videos which are being recommended by YouTube. You all would have faced this situation, right? I have faced this situation, right? Same with your Facebook videos. Consistently, it will recommend videos to you. How are they recommending? Based on your interest, based on your past views, based on your searches, based on your interest level correct so this is basically your netflix or your youtube learns from it and then gives you the right decision so that you are sticking to the application you are not coming out of youtube you understand this guys right so these are examples of machine learning algorithms embedded to it now i can give you hundreds of you pull out your smartphone take out any application right any application which you are using very regularly you take facebook how Facebook is showing advertisements to you. Your advertisements are not same for, compared to your friend's phone advertisements, right? How Facebook is showing advertisements to you. How Instagram is showing whom to follow to you. How Google Maps is showing traffic to you, right? Or you can take your Swiggies and Zomatos and Olas and Uber and whatever application that you use on a daily basis. You have machine learning algorithms embedded to it. And that is why machine learning professionals are high on demand in the industry and that is why every college and university is launching courses on data science because the world is completely moving towards data science and machine learning all right you are able to get it okay so any questions guys just put it on the chat box or keep it yourselves i will take it at the end of the session uh, i hope you guys are able to follow me and you're able to understand so far all right okay so now uh, let us go to the next thing called deep learning. Okay. Now I already told you what is deep learning. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning. Deep learning also learns from the past data, right? So deep learning also takes decisions from the past data, but deep learning uses something called uh, deep neural networks to learn. 
okay so that is the difference between deep learning and normal machine learning okay now let me give you an example you will be able to understand better right <coughs> sorry now imagine this you you are all seeing some signals traffic signals are there and most of your signals will have a timer on it right how many seconds are going to be there uh, i'm not sure about other locations i haven't observed but majorly in all the metro cities it is still there right you will have a timer which will be running on you know in 120 seconds this is the red is going to change to other thing whatever it is right so it will be in decreasing order now how exactly this timer is optimized so let me give you a real time example so that you will be able to understand the real time problem and how it is solved using deep learning okay now all these signals are having timers integrated can you tell me how the timers are built on it first let us say number 1 okay two or three people are put on the signals they collect data for one week or 10 days they continuously collect the vehicle data that is crossing that signal then with that data they go to a statistician and the statistician will optimize the timing based on the data what they are providing now what is the problem here okay it's all working fine sir why do you want to solve it right you always remember this i always will tell my uh, students also that whenever you are doing any project right it should really solve some real time problem else the project will not succeed you might hit the output but it is of no use if it not solving any real time problem okay so what is the real time problem here now the first problem is your data accuracy is a problem you put two people there on a signal to collect data for 7 days or 10 days right there will be lot of distractions etc stuff the data is not going to be very accurate that is the number one issue second is even when you get the data let me take you take to the statistician and the statistician is optimizing it perfectly for a timing now you want to go to the next signal the second signal in your city what do you do again you have to do the same process you have to put two people for one week 10 days etc and you have to do this so this is going to be a painful process repetitive process you all agree correct it's a painful process now you have 100 signals in a city take a city like mumbai or a bangalore you have 100 plus signals how do you do it every time you have to put two people collect data it's a long process painful process as well as cost impactful process so can we solve this using deep learning this is a problem strip so what do we do so first what we can do is we can put a camera on the signal to capture the data agree so in all the signals most of the signals cameras are there already so they will capture the data from the camera parallelly i will train my model for what i will train i will train my model to identify vehicles using images that's all my model should identify images and understand what vehicle is that that's all i need okay now for example take this now i can train my model to identify vehicles in multiple ways see now i will always give this example you can train a small kid two year old kid you can train in multiple ways right now for example you want to say what is apple you can show an apple image and you can train the kid this is apple or you can show a real apple and train the kid you know this is apple correct or you can show a video and you can train the kid this is apple so in multiple ways you can train the kid that this is apple and the kid will understand right in all ways the kid can understand similarly your deep learning models can also be trained in multiple ways now one example i can say is that now how to identify a vehicle now i can say that take the height to width ratio of the vehicles okay so nothing but simple h by w ratio so for each category of vehicles see my model should identify whether it is a car or a bus or a truck correct it don't have to identify whether it is a maruti swift or a uh, hyundai i20 that is not the purpose my purpose is what how many vehicles are passing what are the different vehicles which are passing right so category is important so my h by w is going to be similar right not the same but it is similar for all the cars right similarly my h by w will vary for a truck now correct my height will be very very high compared to the width in a truck similarly for a bicycle or a two wheeler your h by w will be very different so based on the h by w ratio height to width ratio i can train my model to identify the vehicles from the image 
the training in deep learning model takes a lot of time sometimes it even takes months to train a deep learning model okay so once you train to identify the uh, model then the next step is basically you test it right so you pass on a lot of images to test whether it is doing giving the correct output right i will pass on a two wheeler i will pass on different cars to understand whether my model is giving me correct output or not okay so first is training the model the next is testing the model once my test results are good enough right let me take my test results of 95% or above 95% accuracy that is good enough for me to implement my model so once it is good enough what will i do i will take the feed data from the camera and i will pass it on to my model which i have built okay so based on the data see my data is going to be 100% accurate data because it is coming from a camera feed which is recorded data so whenever a camera feed data is passing on to my real model my model will say whether it is a bus it will increment the count of bus if it is a car it will say oh there is one more car came in extra so the count will automatically happen you understand this now once the count happens i can use formulas to optimize the time out based on the count of vehicles that is passing at different point of time it's very simple okay this is a pro solution for the model of course it's not simple to build it but this is the solution. so similarly you can do any so now what is the problem it's solving i told you two problems right one is the data accuracy problem it is solving that because you are getting data from a recorded camera feed second problem is what scalability problem can i implement in 100 signals if you create this model you can implement in any signal across the country because your marathi shift is same in Coimbatore also as well as in your Kashmir also. You agree? So one model what you are building can solve the entire country's signal problem, optimization problem. Correct? So this is exactly how deep learning algorithm works. Right? I recently saw a, a student project. You know, a student has built an amazing project to identify a two-wheeler uh, rider with helmet or without helmet for the uh police so just by the camera feed right it will identify you know what this vehicle is uh this vehicle is coming without helmet this is running with helmet etc now you can automate the fine process right you can do the same thing for seat belt so a lot of such real time applications are possible with deep learning technology all right so let me give you some more example one more example right now let me take this example Take you all would have got some black and white photos, right? Uh, from your fathers or your grandparents' generations, photos, etc. Old photos, even your old photos, some of it might be black and white photos. Now, what is the first thing that you will do? See, today what I have, I'm doing is that I'm digitalizing it and keeping it. So it's an easy scan process, right? So that it will be safe for uh, the color won't fade or I will not lose the photo quality. So what I'm doing, I can just digitalize it and keeping it. Now the second question is, if I want to apply or change it to a colored photo because it looks very dull, right? Let's look at this photo, right? It looks very dull in black and white. So can I make it into a colored photo? It will look more attractive. What should I do now? Okay. So what is the option? I will import this photo to Photoshop, right? And then I need to spend 30 minutes, split it into layers and pick manually colors and apply to it right okay this is sky so it should be blue color this is cloud white color mountain snow etc now this process will take me easily 30 minutes now i have done for one photo assuming that once i done with one photo you are giving me 100 photos so it is going to take me 30 minutes into 100 photos so time taking process first i should know photoshop that is another painful and second is I need to spend so much time to convert each photo to a color photo. Now, can I build a deep learning algorithm to do solve this problem? Of course possible, right? So what is the possibility? What should I do? I need to train my model to identify objects in the image. That's all. It's not so easy. Again, it takes a lot of time, right? Because there can be any object that can be there in the image. So I need to train as many objects as possible. Once I train my 
model to identify the object, then I will always allocate a color to each object, right? You know what? Sky means it will be in sky blue color. Clouds will be in white color. This are all object allocation that is already done. And then if I build a model, then I will test it. And if it works fine, I can implement. It. Just look into this images. All these images are colored using deep learning algorithms only. Just compare these two photos. How beautiful it looks. Right? It's all done by, see, look at the colors that have been applied. Sky blues or your clouds or your mountain snow, etc. Not manually done. This is done by deep learning algorithms. So now what is the advantage? Once I build this algorithm, you give me 100 photos, 1000 photos, doesn't matter. Right? My algorithm is going to color it, make it into a colored photo beautifully. This is exactly how deep learning algorithms are used. Okay, so you are here now. So they can, I can give you multiple examples like this. Let me take another example. You have something called Google Lens application. Right, you walk into, you know, I think most of you would have traveled to other countries as well. You go to some countries where like European countries or your uh, Asian countries like China, Japan, etc. They do not have English as a common language. Right, their English is not a major language. So now what happens, if you, you want, you will see all the signages in Chinese or in Japanese in their country, right? You don't understand what to read, right? You don't know whether it is a restaurant or what it is because it will all be in Chinese or Japanese languages. So Google Lens is an application which came out to give that, solve that problem. You pull out your Google Lens and show that, okay, translated, it, it will automatically translate it to English for you, right? So beautiful application completely operates on deep learning algorithm or anything. Now, you know, one recent example, you know, uh, my wife bought a plant and came the irony is that she don't know what plant it is and nobody is able to figure out what plant it is, right? It's growing much faster, etc. but nobody knows what it is. So I just pulled out my Google Lens app and I just clicked the photo of it. My Google Lens told me correctly what plant it is. See how beautiful it works, right? How it works, completely deep learning algorithm, the same way. How I gave you examples of your traffic and vehicle identification, etc. Right, so your deep learning applications can be used to solve some real time problems, right? And a lot of examples I can give you. You pull out, you take a lot of application even in your things, right? Your if you take your mobile for some cameras, right? When you take selfies, it will tell you the age of the person, right? Or else there is an op like you upload a photo in Facebook. Facebook will tell you tag this particular person, right? Facebook will say, you know what, hey. You missed out Gautam here. Why did you miss Gautam? Gautam is there. Please tag Gautam. How do Facebook knows this is what this is how Gautam? Right? How your Google Photos knows who it is and how it's classifying into your photos, your brother photo, wife photo, kids photo, etc. Right? All are deep learning algorithms. A recent example is that it is used in the medical field. If you are aware of it, like there is a disease called diabetic retinopathy. Now, what is diabetic retinopathy? It is nothing but if you get diabetes, if you're a diabetes patient, their retina, the chances of their retina getting affected as well. Okay. So if you identify earlier, you can treat it with medicine, which is very, very easy, cheaper. If it is slightly later, then you need to go for surgery, which is again a, a, a expensive process. Or else if you are identifying it very late, you might lose the vision. And being diabetes capital of the world, India is having so many diabetes patients, right? Now, the problem here is many rural uh, patients are there, right? In the villages, the core and core of the villages. They will not come for regular testing of their retina. They will not even know whether they have diabetes or not. So, there will be a lot of NGOs which will conduct free eye checkup camps. You all would have seen this in India. It's very, very common, right? Free eye checkup camps by NGOs. A big doctor or a scan a specialist will not go for that, right? A radiologist will not go for a eye checkup. Normally, in most of the places, only the nurses will go or a junior doctor and an intern doctor will go. So what Google came out with a solution is that, see, these people cannot identify, right? So, so Google came out with a solution of using deep learning to identify diabetic retinopathy, right? So they partnered with two eye care centers in Tamil Nadu and they built this system. 
now this has been implemented across the world they are taking it to even to african countries and all other countries as well what is that you just take a retina scan which is very very easy you go to eye checkup you just take retina scan right that image can be put into the google system deep learning system google system will tell you whether the patient is having diabetic retinopathy or not as simple as that right so such a good application completely implemented so you can see this how it is used in very very different industries across the world all right so these are examples of deep learning algorithm so now you would have got an idea about it right you are what is data analytics so data science is a combination of all these things right so we data analytics or it could be machine learning or it could be deep learning or there is also other features like nlps and stuff like that which you will be seeing later okay so now you wanted to learn or get into data science what should you do okay so basically what are the tools that you need to be proficient if you want to move into data science right so the very fundamental of data science is statistics nothing else so without statistics i would say that there is no data science you cannot you can be an excellent coder in python or r or any tool but without statistics knowledge it is difficult for you to be successful in data science so statistics is the fundamental right once you learn statistics the next part is that i would recommend you to go through a spreadsheet properly today's term we are not just calling it as excel we call it advanced excel because everybody says they know excel so i will not tell you you know go and learn excel then it is like very basics you will be learning it so you need to learn advanced excel or google sheet whatever it is both are almost same right one more speciality is that you can add which is not mandatory but still it's good to have is a sql tool sql is one of the easiest languages to learn my sql you can take it you can learn sql as well right these are important tools for data science professionals right and then comes the very important tool which is basically your analytics tool which is r or python today today industry is ruled by these two giants r and python comprises 90 percentage of data science industry okay in personally if you ask me i would recommend you to learn both but if you ask me put a gun on my head and ask me any one tool what will you choose then i will choose python okay because majority of the applications can be done using python but i would still recommend you to go and learn both r and python if you wanted to be uh, good in data science the final part is called data visualization again one of the easiest thing to learn today we have two very common tools called tableau and power bi again i would recommend you to learn both because very similar not much technical knowledge is required for visualization right but if you again put uh, one option to me then personally i would prefer tableau to take it so this is the combination what you should be proficient about if you want to get into the data science industry right or even if you want to be uh, you know integrating or uh, you know starting courses in your colleges or university ensure that there are good amount of case studies built on all this stuff right see the case studies has to be real case studies has to be practical and case studies has to be relatable okay so that is very very important it should solve some real time problem all right so uh, so we have come to the final part of the uh, session guys so thanks for bearing with me so far almost 300 plus participants are there good to see that so today i'm going to also share with you something called data science club and this is an imarticus initiative so what we are doing is that we have launched this data science club across colleges and universities across the country so your college and your university can also be part of this data science club going forward and what are the benefits that you get out of it i'll be giving you i will walk you through this right so basically what is the vision and mission of uh, this data science club uh, to inspire and nurture and assist students in data science domain right so today uh, so this is like you know we are in the very very weak or in the uh, beginning of the era of data science right we are not in the advanced stage we are in the very early stage so this is the right time for a lot of students to come into it to get into the data science industry so that is the first goal and we would like to facilitate knowledge sharing like today's session you know research projects and career enhancements towards data science industry 
so that is another mission uh, we wanted to exchange ideas and information and knowledge among the club members across the country also to provide latest developments in the industry to the academia that is also one of the key goals of this data science club okay so now uh, what should be, basically we also have a good amount of board of advisors for the data science club right that's close to six people who are advising us and uh, one is mr arul francis you will be uh, attending a session from him tomorrow one of the uh, uh, you know industry veteran with more than 12 years so we have good amount of people on board uh, as board of advisors who will be assisting different colleges wherein this club is active right where the data science club is active these advisors are available at any time to uh, support the team as well okay so some of their names uh, we have listed here and their profiles and everybody is are extend to seniors industry experience completely industry professionals who will be guiding the students on these data science activities right so what are the benefits that the college gets out of uh, this data science uh, basically you will be getting regular invites to industry guest lectures and webinars done by industry people okay so that is one a benefit free to attend again uh, very very clear there is no cost involved to institution in any form or any way okay none of this is you do not have to spend any money for from the college end is absolutely free so we will also be doing national level hackathon basically uh, two hackathons in a year national level hackathons are there participation is probably we will be charging 500 rupees but for data science club membership people all the colleges who are data science club members it is absolutely free there will be regular uh, workshops and certification programs like for example there is a um, certification program that's happening on this monday for the club members it is on data visualization using tableau similar like that right so again free to attend no cost at all then there are faculty development programs uh, basically again it is uh, similar like what you are uh, attending today yearly we are doing four to five faculty development programs on different topics today what we are seeing is python similarly there has been like r advanced excel statistics lot of other topics we are doing ftps as well right as well as placement support to eligible students so we have a very close connect to the industry so wherever there is a hiring opportunity is coming in we will be able to identify and cherry pick the students who have performed well during all these events right hackathons and stuff like that and we can give basically opportunities to them as well in the uh, industry as well right so what are the process uh, basically you need to fill up an application form your college is interested you can consult with your record persons authorities hods or etc and you can uh, fill up the application form and mous will be signed with the eligible institutions and post mou is signed we will be electing office bearers right so a student representative as well as a faculty representative will be elected and they will be coordinating and organizing all these events in their college end okay again no cost for membership or no cost involved right from the beginning to the end for any of these activities so which i would like to reiterate on this so in case if you are interested your college is wanted to be interested uh, to be part of the data science club you can uh, please contact the respective person uh, different locations probably if your location is not mentioned over here you can uh, reach out to the nearest location right whatever is the nearest location you can reach out and you can please talk to the concerned people and get your college enrolled for the data science club so that you will be getting continuous benefits regarding data science uh, updates and industry stuff right so thank you so much uh, guys thanks for your patience thanks for your uh, time that you have taken out to attend this session so now i'm opening out for your questions so any questions please put it out on the chat box i'll be happy to take it for you thank you thanks a lot uh, ahmed sir it's really an informative session You have touched nook and corner of uh, data science. You have uh, you have uh, you spoke about uh, data science, AI, machine learning, deep learning, all these things. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, we are expecting more say more on the upcoming sessions. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Now I call Tamil Shelvi to continue. Thank you, sir. It was a very informative and knowledgeable session. There are few questions already posted in the chat box. Where uh, uh, one question is on uh, on what basis you told it's doubling? Any algorithm applied? 
Yeah, actually, doubling rate. We uh, use a, a algorithm, basically a statistical model, to find out the doubling rate, and uh, that is how we. Because see, there are multiple ways you can predict the future part, right? Now you can understand, like you know, what is the what is it going to be in the next uh, five days or next ten days or whatever it is, right? But doubling rate is one of the very commonly used algorithm to understand the cases like this, right? You know, where it is consistently every day the data changes, right? So your doubling rate also changes on a daily basis as well. So that's one of the algorithms which is used. Uh, okay. Next question. Uh, what is the difference between BI analytics and data analytics? Uh, can you repeat it, ma'am? I didn't get you. What is the difference what between? between bi business business intelligence analytics and data analytics okay see business intelligence is ideally what we call it as a visualization part of it right so data analytics is the step one step before that right so in industry terms what they call bi is basically the visualization part so somebody will do the analysis and somebody will do the visualization so in case in in other case you can itself do both as well so basically it is uh, Put together, it is all the process of data analysis only. Uh, uh, one question is on what is the qualification for learning data science and machine learning? No qualification. Anyone can learn. Uh, and many were asking about uh, to explain or uh, with the same example how to differentiate between AI, ML, and uh, uh, DL, the deep learning. Uh, okay see there is nothing to differentiate basically your ai is the uh, major main branch right and in which you have multiple branches machine learning is one branch wherein uh, uh, i told you right where a machine learns from the past data and takes decisions i gave you a lot of examples using netflix or your google search engine or your uh, uh, other uh, examples which i gave you ola uber application etc so all these application, if you see here, they are learning from the past data, right? What you have searched or who has searched for or what are the videos that you are watching, etc. So all these are your data from which your application is learning and taking decisions. Now, deep learning is a subset of machine learning. What it means is that deep learning will also do the same thing, right? It will also learn from the past data. No doubt about it. But it uses something called neural networks. I haven't gone deep into neural networks, what is it, etc. I gave you some examples. So in a very layman's term, if I say, if a training of a system is very, very complicated, right? I told you, right? Like it takes months to train a system or it requires a large amount of data to train a system. Then we classify those problems as a deep learning problem in a very, very uh, layman's explanation, simple explanation. Okay, next question. Uh... When you are asking to differentiate between machine learning and uh, deep learning. Right. I think I've given that explanation uh, already. Already, right. Uh, yeah. And uh, using deep learning, how the robot features identify on, on tracking. CNN can use for speech recognition features selection. Yeah, you can use it. And uh, again, I'm not going to the technical part of it. If you have some more technical queries, I think in tomorrow's session, it will you will be able to get more answers out of it. Because if I'm going to the AN and CNN stuff directly, then a lot of people will look uh, clueless. So I don't want to put you put others into that difficult situation. How to decide whether a problem needs a machine learning or a deep learning? I explained already, guys. Uh, so if the requirement of data to train a system is very very high, right? You need huge amount of data to train a system. Then you can classify that as a deep learning problem. How big data is related to data science? And what is the difference between data analytics and data science? Okay, data see, data science is a common domain, right? So basically, data science is nothing but study of data. So all these comes under data science only. A data analytics or a machine learning or a deep learning, all these comes under data science as a common domain. All right. Now, the other question, what was it, ma'am? The first question I missed it. What is the difference between? How a data analytics is, um, sorry, big data is related to data science. Okay, uh, big data is nothing but when your data size is huge, right? So uh, now see, for example, your uh, uh, COVID cases earlier was about 1,000 or 10,000, etc. right? So you can do some basic analysis. Now, if the COVID cases goes to uh, next 20 days, I said it is projected to reach 24, 25 lakhs. So that is about 2.5 million. 
now you wanted to do work with data of billions of size so then it is all called as big data right the huge amount of data coming in so can you explain a semi supervised learning again it's more technical i would uh, uh, not get into prefer not to get into what basically your machine learning is split into two major concepts i'll just give an overview right one is called supervised learning the other is called unsupervised learning okay your supervised learning is basically nothing but wherein you have labeled data sets and you are training your system with the labeled data set so that your system is going to work on basis of that if your data set is not labeled data set or non identified data set then we call this as the unsupervised learning more like your deep learning can also be called as an unsupervised learning as well so it i don't want to get into again more deeper into it because again it will take another 2 hours of session to explain to them with examples what is supervised and unsupervised etc is digital marketing a part of data science no digital marketing is not part of data science but you can use data science in digital marketing i think we have come to the end of question answer session i think there is no more questions yes thank you uh, thanks for thanks for your patience in answering all the questions thank you ma'am thank you so much okay uh, now the feedback link will be posted in the uh, chat window before that uh, i would call mr uh, d saidali for the formal vote of thanks of the session uh, sayed sir uh, sorry we are not able to hear you sayed sir Sir, yes, sir, we are not able to hear you. Can you check your mic? Yeah, Tamil, you can sing. Participants are requested to uh, fill in the uh, feedback form, which is necessary for earning the certificate. No sir, you are not audible. No sir, you are not audible. Kindly check your mic. No sir. Okay, Tamil can deliver the text. Okay. So good afternoon, and all. This is Tamil Selvi, Assistant Professor, Department of IT, Dr. M J Education Research Institute. It is a great honor and privilege to propose the word of thanks on this occasion. Let me first start thanking the Almighty God for making uh, today's even a resounding success. Then I would thank our speaker, Mr. Hamid Khalid, Vice President, Emacus Learning. for carrying away a knowledgeable and enlightening session on introduction to data science thank you sir it is my pleasure to thank our honorable and dynamic president engineer acs arun kumar who had been a continuous support system and always encourages us to take a, a step forward and stay ahead i also thank our registrar dr cb palnivelu joint registrar dr v siril raj and dean ent dr s sindhil velan for their guidance and encouragement in all our efforts My heartfelt thanks to my head and colleagues who worked hard to ensure that these events become a milestone. 
my special gratitude to the distinguished participants of the day without whom the event wouldn't be a resounding success once again i thank you all for your attention thank you uh, we would all meet you for the day 2 session on uh, hands on training python i mean data science using python at the same time tomorrow at 11 am thank you